What is up my friends, KB here, I'm a digital artist slash illustrator. This video will be the beginning of my journey in creating a children's book illustration portfolio. I'll be telling you guys my entire game plan and also showcase my entire portfolio formula which you can use as well. And will reveal the 6 amazing artists that I'll be using as an inspiration in creating each art piece in this portfolio project. So this will be like a video series where I'll be taking you guys with me one art piece at a time and once i'm done i will also show you my methods on how i can land a job in this industry i honestly don't know what's to come and i might fail but i want to document this experience and hoping someday that this series will be available resources for the next generation of artists and by the way i am not planning to use fiverr or upwork or any overly saturated platforms to find these clients anyways let's get started the importance of art portfolios. So art portfolios are a great way to showcase your skills and get noticed. They are an essential part of the job application process. However, artists are often faced with the dilemma of what to include in their portfolio. So what I've learned so far is that the illustration industry is like a vast ocean. We have to position ourselves first on where should we fit in within the industry. How? Well, a good tip is the combination of your target market and your signature style will create the very essence of who you are as an artist in the industry. There are many different markets for illustration. There is editorial, toys and games, visdev, publishing, abstract, erotic, and many more. And each market has its own set of requirements and expectations when it comes to art portfolios. So once you have chosen a market that you want to pursue, that is the time we will create a portfolio that caters in that market. Now disclaimer, this is the stuff I just learned in the internet, watching YouTube videos, reading blogs and articles, taking online courses. Now, there are more qualified artists that can literally give you advice online when it comes to this industry. Just consider me as a human guinea pig, you know, like testing this information out. All of this knowledge that I've obtained so far will be completely useless if I clearly don't take action. That's why I'm creating this video series to hold me accountable because it will simply be embarrassing if I don't follow through and I don't want to let my art community down. The game plan. My game plan is to create 13 art pieces for my children's book portfolio. Then I will create a website for my portfolio. Next, I will set up my business plan and all of the things I need to set up shop like invoices and spreadsheets. Lastly, searching and approaching potential clients, which will be the intimidating and scary part. But let's worry about that when the time comes. My portfolio formula. So I did some research. You don't technically need 13 art pieces for your portfolio. You can create 7 or less as long as it contains all of the collection of your best work. The portfolio should contain the skills and qualifications depending on your chosen market. You have to let art directors, agents, authors, or editors know that you can do the job with no problem at all. Like in my case, which is the children's book market, creating a single illustration page and knowing where to leave a space for the author to put the text is an important skill. This applies as well for double page spread. You have to know visual storytelling drawing animals, drawing children, and adults of different ages and race, ability to create interior or exterior background designs, and many more. You get the gist. So I'ma start this series by strategizing all of the pieces that I'll be including in this portfolio. You know, show you my formula. But if you wanna skip the portfolio formula section, here's a timestamp of me revealing the five artists that I'll get inspiration from. And under the description below, you will find a video link of me already starting production in my very first piece in this portfolio. Alright, so now that's settled, let me demonstrate my formula. Feel free to follow along, but just a heads up, this only applies to my chosen market, which is children's book publishing. Might work for some market like VizDev, but I'll let you be the judge of that. This formula will give you an idea on, you know, how you can break things down. So we will start this formula by identifying the necessary skills needed to become a professional. Like, we have to act like we already got the job. So here is a list of the skills I need to present in my portfolio based on my research. Feel free to pause the video. So once we have this in mind, we can put this on the side like a reference and break this down to a table. So let's point out all the key aspects of an average art piece that we are going to do in this job. So let's call them our priorities. 
First, priority. Obviously, we will be creating single and double pages in this market. So these are the types of formats that we should know how to do. So first is formats. Second priority to showcase in this portfolio is my skills in background design. Next priority skill will be my lighting and atmosphere prowess. After that, we can't forget to show off our skills in doing different sort of perspectives and camera shots. Next will be characters. I have to present and design the characters in the scenario. Lastly will be storytelling. Okay, once we identify the skills I need to prioritize, we can create a column for each of them, like this. But to make sure this video won't take an hour to watch, I will just demonstrate it with two art piece examples to show you how I plan my portfolio. Alright, skills are still present. Let me mark the ones I already included. First, the types of format we need to showcase. So. It can be single and double page spread like I said earlier, or it can be book covers and sequences. I will put single page and cover. For that, I can mark number 8 which is compelling book covers. Second is backgrounds. Now this is my favorite and the skill I want to prioritize because it is my weakness. Now backgrounds can be interior and exterior, and you can be specific if you want. Like for example, exterior design can be environmental focus like mountains, forests, and valleys or structured focus like city streets, medieval villages, and so on. Third is lighting or atmosphere as well. So it can be midday summer and winter night. The fourth will be challenging because perspective can be a drag but worth it once we figured it out. Like in this case, I want to create something challenging like high level shot and a simple one which is establishing shot. Fifth will be characters, so we don't have to be specific at the beginning, but it is always good to write down the vague idea you have for the characters. So I made sure that the characters will also include animals, so let's mark that in our skills. And of course, kids with different race. Look at that, we've marked a lot of skills and this only covers the two art pieces. We can use each skill again in other pieces of course to show our consistency, especially if I am drawing the same characters over and over again in different pages like a sequence so i will mark number nine for that lastly is the story these are the visual description of what is happening in the scene so i made sure each story are about kids like playing with new toys and with friends obviously this will include some expressions and action poses so let's mark that as well so this is my formula i hope you got an idea on how to break things down when it comes to planning your portfolio so feel free to comment down below if you have a better formula. I'm always open to learn something new. I will truly appreciate it because as I said, I am just documenting my journey in building this portfolio. My inspirations. So I always limit myself when it comes to reference searching. It can be good for having a lot of it, but it can be time consuming and overwhelming. Same goes with inspiration. I want to make sure it is still easy to navigate. So in this section, I have chosen six amazing artists. Their art is the sort of quality art that I'm aiming for, simply because I admire their signature art so much, and I believe I can use it as a base to create my children's book portfolio. In fact, three of these artists are part of my dream 10. First one will be Derek Laufman. Let's check his IG. I love his line work and how he uses it for textures and details. So once I start, by the way, I'll be a Patreon for every single inspiration who has a Patreon so I can learn about their work in a deeper level. Plus, it supports them as an artist. Now look at this cover art. Wowza. So I will try to learn more about his technique. But just by looking at it, for the shadows, he is using multiply mode with a purple palette. That's awesome. Second is Carlos Dalma. I admire how eye-catching his artwork is, especially when it comes to his color choices and how he tells a story. He also has a Patreon and I'm truly excited to subscribe at the end of the month once I get my salary though. Third will be Raid. Her lighting is impeccable and her visual storytelling like this one gives an incredible warm cinematic feel. She does have an online course in Domestica and I will definitely purchase that course for the sake of me doing this portfolio. Fourth will be Luigi Lucarelli. So what I will be studying from him by stalking him will be his amazing character design. I love how cute and stylized his characters and it is the kind of character design I want to have in my children's book portfolio. Let's see if he has a Patreon. He doesn't, but he does have an NFT project. Wow, look at that dedication. Damn, gotta be honest, his NFT looks better than Bored Apes. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely support this once I'm financially stable or something. <laughs> Fifth will be Ian Worrell. He was an art director in the show Gravity Falls in 2011 to 2015. So what I'll be learning from him is his overall background design. You can't deny how good this is. Look at that. I can't even do that and kind of nervous and intimidated on doing this series. But I will power through. 
He was even part of the Mitchells vs. The Machine Netflix movie production. Awesome. Lastly will be Cesar Vergara. He is another character designer in this mix. But what I mainly want to study from him is his way of exaggerating his character designs. The way they pose and express themselves. He even drew Michael and Dwight from The Office. Nice. So these are all going to be my inspirations. So you'll get to see their pieces used as a reference on the side to some art process that I'll be doing. And this is a summary of their specific skills I want to convey in my art pieces. Might adjust it along the way because I still need to check it myself if the mix will be compatible. But I'll find a way to make it work. Alright, I'm confident that I won't be able to execute completely their signature style. But remember, it is always a good practice to learn from other artists' work. That is it for this video. I truly hope that this breakdown will give you an idea on how to plan your portfolio. If you want to follow along with me in this art portfolio journey, please leave me a like and subscribe to my channel to support it so I can continue to provide educational content just like this. Plus, it will really help me escape the starving artist lifestyle. And of course, under the description below, there will be a link of the YouTube video of me finally doing my first piece in this art portfolio. And I made sure that video contains educational content, specifically how to do interior background designs. But stylized, of course. So see you guys there. Cheers.